You want to keep warm when you're feeling chilled, but you don't want to raise your heating bill. Blankets are okay, but they can slip and slide. And when you need to reach for something, your hands are trapped inside. Now, there's the EG Jersey, the jersey with sleeves. The jersey keeps you totally warm and gives you the freedom to use your hands. So now, you can work the remote or read a book in total warmth and comfort. Use your computer without being cold or enjoy a snack while staying snugly warm. EG Jersey is made of ultra-performance mega sportsy fabric with normal size sleeves. So you can move your arms and use your hands and still be wrapped in warmth. Available in sizes for all, so you can stay warm from head to toe. No more cold feet. And with EG Jersey, you can get up and still stay warm. Perfect for men, women, and children too. The ultra-performance fabric keeps you totally warm. And the sleeves keep your hands free. So you can snuggle your baby in your arms or keep your pet close at hand. The EG Jersey is machine washable, so you'll get years of warmth and comfort. Do what you need to and stay totally warm with the EG Jersey. To order, visit evilgeniuses.gg slash jersey. Remember, you'll get the ultra-soft, ultra-warm jersey for just $84.95 plus processing and handling. Jersey machine washable with extra processing and handling. Local livestock and slave labor laws may apply. Visit evilgeniuses.gg slash jersey. back game number three of our last best of three our lone best of three of the day sneaky nicks assassins taking on evil geniuses and we're all knotted up one to one eg obviously the heavy favorite coming into this but did not look great in game two at all the draft a little strange the execution certainly lacking it's not capitalizing on the back of some nice play from tc on the tiny and really overall just nice coordination and nice movement across the map as a whole and now moving ahead to game three it is worth mentioning with eg's loss in that last game things actually do get a little murky mathematically um, so we'll have to see. They still basically need to lock down their spot with the win in their last series now because they did drop that second game as opposed to the 2-0 everyone uh, rather expected. So it's not already with at least a moral seconds. victory. Taking a look at the draft for what it is. The Faceless Void and the Elder Titan paired up. Love that combination. Bad Rider and Death Prophet also out for Snaw. In the meantime, EG gets their Jakiro first pick, Brew, Ogre, and the Shadow Demon. So that will be a core Jakiro with the Brew. Well, we'll see if that's going to be safe lane or mid. Anyway, to uh, break down the draft, and of course, Linda's insight and analysis is always Tralf. And yeah, Tralf, uh, last game was just kind of ugly by the end. Yeah, it was very ugly. It's kind of a different draft from EG, and it didn't, the heroes didn't work well together, like, they could have, but they didn't. Uh, the roaming, seconds, you know, weird stuff from Doom. I don't say this much, but I will say that, Five I will say it this time, remaining. that sometimes I think it's best to utilize a player like Arteezy on a hero that was going to be more impactful, you know? I think that, right. I, I think that generally, generally when, when that said, it's not entirely true because it's like you want to pick what's the best draft that possible and, you know, even if he can farm very, very fast and take over game one game on Storm Spirit, doesn't mean he can't be effective on, you know, the, the Doom this game, but... I think that's actually the case for, for Arteezy. Seconds, I think he just functions a lot better on a higher impact hero and a hero that benefits Five more from farm than, than a Doom. I mean, look at game one. That's a perfect example. The Storm Spirit, he oh, yeah. took over the game. So. EG doing something a little bit more standard. I think they're really going to love these heroes. Like Brew, Ogre, Jakiro. These are all heroes they Evil love Jesus to draft. They have high success rate with. And I already like it a lot more. And Sneaky, Ness, Sneak, Sneaky Nick's Assassins. Pick up the Elder Titan first again, which I still think is curious because I know it's a good hero. I just don't, to be honest, I don't think that they play it that well. I I, yeah. I feel like it could have been replaced with so many different heroes in both games, and, and we would have either A, not seen a difference, or B, seen a much bigger, bigger difference, but in a positive way. Yeah, yeah maybe it's a developmental thing for Snob. Maybe they know that they don't play him that well. Or I mean, let's be fair. Maybe Whitebeard's just having an off day. Uh, and maybe EG's just prioritizing him. And, may, you know, there's any number of things that could factor into it. But if nothing else, like you said, if it is something that they're just innately not very good at as a squad, 
At the very least, maybe they're practicing it. And uh, tra- and they got a win in game two uh, with it. So, um, you know, it, it, it worked to the extent they needed it to in Five that particular sense. Remaining. This time, EG once again, I mean, they're once again going with a carryless kind of an approach. I mean, time. Brew certainly can carry the water and and uh, do a lot in the mid game. Necrophos never really stops being good. And same thing's true of Brew, but you don't have a hero like a Void, for example, that, you know, you can just count on if he gets six slot of being able to blow heroes up. And uh, so rolling the dice once again on the mid game. Yeah, I will say the biggest difference, though, is that the Jakiro is put in a core role and he's going to come online yeah. a lot earlier. And th- that's where EG can get away with this kind of, I think, early to mid game centric lineup and not have so much late game is when a hero like or when a player like Universe is playing a Jakiro or something like it that gets a ton of farm and can be uh, at you know high impact like very early on like 12 minutes with the Yules you can just start yeah. fighting and it, and it seems to work out well the great thing is you don't even need a Yules per se with Jakiro when you have Shadow Demon drafted because that's actually a very old uh combination together there's it's the disruption plus the macro pyre and ice bath very easy to lock mm-hmm. people down Shadow Demon picked up in response to both the faceless void and the bat rider I like that and the Necrophos, yeah. uh, it's one of actually, I think, Artisi's, um more favorite heroes, at least right now. And yeah, he will be playing that one. Yep. Arteezy on the Necro. And the big thing about game two, I think, and I, <laughs> Necro is not a hero I think we have to worry about doing it. It wasn't just the hero that they put Arteezy on. The problem, like you said, not very impactful um, unless he gets way far ahead and so on. But it was the way they played it, too. I mean, they just kind of spent a lot of his time roaming the map and not getting a whole lot done, gave up a bunch of early deaths, and he had to build a Midas and try to catch up, and just was never really relevant. And Necrophos, so long as he doesn't end up dead a lot as well, will be quite relevant with Fear on the Brewmaster, no surprise there. And uh, we'll take a look at the rest now as we move on in. And Game 3, as mentioned, of EG versus Nyx Assassins. And, yep, going to be Zion the Ogre and PPD on the Shadow Demon and, of course, Universe. Um, what has become something very common for him in recent months, the Cord Jakiro. Up at the top, Whitebeard for the third game will be on the Elder Titan. Going to be looking to have a better performance than he's had thus far. Support Murano will be played by Fluff. Mike's actually going to be on the bat, so he'll be heading out to the offlane here shortly. Both uh, sides just running defense on their jungles. Doesn't look like we're going to have a whole lot going on. And apparently the West server is much better. They're both, they're, everybody's quite happy. Um, except for Mike, who is not particularly happy. Oh, come on. He's in Michigan, man. That's like not even far east. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. And Zai is, Zai is European, man. He's struggling with the uh, 200 pink, but Zai is yep. a trooper. Well, so they're going to see the lanes back. begin to set. And last game, things marred a little bit by server issues. Apparently, there was something wrong with my audio as well towards the end. But... I'm watching very intently to make sure everything is straight this time around. And it appears that it is. So uh, I want to see. I mean, it looks like it should be relatively quiet. Universe is going to be out in the off lane. And it's going to be TC up there. Whitebeard, I'm sure, will head up there on the support. Uh, we've got Fluff the watching battle. the bottom rune spot. PPD. We'll spot a haste and go ahead and take it. At top, Whitebeard happy to take the bounty. And yeah, Fluff's just going to go ahead and fall back into his own jungle. Uh, I don't know. Is he going to hang here in mid? Maybe try to hit an arrow? No, nah, he's going to keep going. So should be D-Try versus D-Try, and it's just going to be how well the off leaders can do. Mike on the bat and the universe on the Jakiro, and then, of course, the mid matchup, which will be Fear on the Brew versus Brax's Death Prophet. Mm, they're going to go for a kill on mid, it looks like. Haste on PPD with the smoke. He's just going to run for it. And yep, he go. does get the disruption. Zai's there to follow with the Fire Blast. Fear has his clap as well. They're going to sync it up. Still feeling a little bit tanky, but they should be able to get him, and they do. PPD got hit by an arrow that Fluff tossed out behind it, but it wasn't the longest duration, and it wasn't the most damage. Immediate TP back. Zai takes a little bit more auto attack damage, but first blood, easy peasy for EG. Yep, very nicely done. And nice, nice toggling of the... Actually, arrow comes out. It almost hits Fear, but he'll be okay. Nice, um toggling of their, their stuns and slows. Fear waited the full duration of the stun to actually get his slow off, and without that, I don't think they get that kill on the Brax. Brax tried to get a last hurrah with the uh, Crypt Swarm onto PPD, but just wasn't enough, so. He's still farming nicely, getting a lot of last hits here. Four and one, five and one now for Brax, compared to a four and one for the Brew. So despite getting a first blood, we actually went to PPD. So that'll be early boots for him, and he actually catches out someone up here who is this Fluff. Uh, yeah, Fluff spotted out. The 
Echo Stomp from Elder Titan, not on point. He might get Fluff. If he actually had hit that auto attack, yeah, he's not going to go up. Otherwise, he would have been sandwiched in. If he hit that auto attack, he maybe chases. There's nice a nice arrow. arrow from Fluff. And PPD ends up dropping. Down at bottom, they actually had a chance to kill Mike as well. He was just level uh, one and a half and had uh, a point. Well, yeah, level one and a half, and he had a point in a sticky napalm, and they were chasing him through the trees. He had to burn through all of his regen to be able to get away. So I was watching that until the action broke out. Nonetheless, it's one to one and a nice turnaround from Fluff and stuff. And they are roaming the Marana hardcore. She's not even level two yet, so they need to get something accomplished with him pretty much everywhere he goes. PPD pings him out, though, immediately knows where he is. Yeah, there's actually a ward here. This is by the Nyx Assassins. Typically, you see this ward placed out by the Radiant, but there is an Invis Ogre. When he picked up this Invis rune, it was bottom. They uh, they didn't ping it out, and it actually leads me to believe that they didn't see it, but they should have, because they had a ward there. So they should have known that Ogre was invis, and I don't know if they do. They are sitting carefully behind the tier 2, so maybe they do know this. Yeah, I think they do. Otherwise, they yeah. wouldn't be sitting so defensively like this. Zai, continuing to hang around. Let's see what he wants to do. <laughs> Comes up and throws out the fire blast. He gets a right click on the white beard. Arrow! Oh my Caught god! Zai! Well shot by Fluff! And PPD can't do much. Turns and uses the disruption just to secure his own escape. So Zai caught, uh, caught being a little bit greedy. That's going to make it 2-1. to one. Nick's Assassin's lead. Let's talk about this mid matchup. This is actually going the way slightly of uh, Nick's as well. A little bit of a CS lead for Brax, but relatively a wash. As Fear's right behind him at 14 now. 14-16. to 16. Down at bottom, Artiz. He's number one in farm, however. Sitting at 20 CS. And I want to see what... How Arteezy wants to play this? You think this is a game where he goes early mech and they try to fight, or do you think, um, like, or do you think it's much more subtle than that? Well, in games I've been playing with Arteezy, he's been doing the same build every time, which is rushing Atos into blink you uh, blink bots, and then probably an Agonims after that. I've been seeing him do this every time, so I expect a, a very fast Atos and a blink probably after that, and then just run at people. Not not so much farming, it's just ganking with the ultimate. In mid, Whitebeard and Zai, eyes on each other. They're both going to try to compete for the four-minute rune. Fire Blast, there's a haste, and it will be picked up by Whitebeard. And at bottom, it's a bounty nobody seemed to care about. <laughs> I'm completely uncontested. And so far, Snaw's doing okay, but they do have to account for RTZ at some point. Mike, in the meantime, has 10 CS. He is level 5, has his brown boots and his bottle, and can fall back into the jungle anytime he cares to. Yep, but as long as he can still get something here bottom, I think he's fine. And once he gets up bottle, it's going to be a little bit easier too. He can push out the wave bottom, then actually start taking the jungle in uh, the Radiance jungle. Some action on Tafir. Doesn't have a split yet, but he should be fine. And Zai being the tanky ogre that he is, he's not in harm's way either, so. No. Zai is kind of hanging around, watching things, making sure they don't get out of hand. Fluff is still under cover of smoke. About half time left on it. He and Whitebeard are going to make their way up to top. And they'll see what they can find. You know, this is actually a deceptively good combination as well. Echo Stomp and Arrow, very, very strong. It's basically a, the equivalent of a Bane Sleep in a lot of ways. Universe, yep, got bashed. And using the Astral Spirit to try and look for a Stomp. And there's the Disruption, and he actually missed. Oh, no, he did get PPD, but the Arrow wasn't coming. Didn't have the mana or the cooldown. And now Whitebeard and TC decide to go for the dive on the PPD. A little bit of right click, and they do manage to get him. TP's going to be coming in. Universe doesn't have Ice Path, and the Leap gets Fluff back to safety as well. So they end up going one for one. They lost their Elder Titan behind that, but they did manage to bring uh, bring one down as well. Make it two to three. Nick still leading in terms of the scoreboard, and the gold is actually still in EG's favor, but Nick's cutting it down considerably. Yeah, pretty good trade. I would say a slight win there for Nyx as the Faceless Void got the kill, so it's pretty good for him. Has to go back to base though to heal, but I think he had to go anyway. He was out of regen and taking too much harass from the zero mana cost liquid fire spell, quote unquote, by Universe. So, <laughs> yeah, Brax in mid though. He's at 33 CS, it's as expected, doing a little bit better despite the gank than the Brewmaster. Brewmaster does have his ulti ready to go though. So he's actually going to pick up an invis too. This could be very big. This is not spotted out by the Dire team. So if he wanted to make some kind of rotation, they wouldn't really know unless he shows himself with an invis bottled mid, which he will. Okay. But nonetheless, he's still going to get a good farm. 
Yeah, looks like he just wants to focus on farm priority at the moment. Not too worried about anything else. In the meantime, PPD and RTZ looking for Mike, and they're going to find him. Disruption leap. RTZ's there is. Level 7 has his ulti. He manages to get him low, and they do. Easy kill, and that's significant. 53 seconds down for a bad rider before he managed to find time to go into the jungle to start farming the blink. So they're going to delay that quite a bit. And just uh, a big deal for RTZ to be able to farm completely free in the lane. And we'll see if they want to collapse anywhere else. In the meantime, Fear has used that invis. He still has split, and he's waiting patiently on Brax. I don't see it. Brax must know or at least suspect because he is not coming out anywhere near the edge of that, uh, of that lip. And <laughs> comes down now to get a deny once he sees the reveal. Jakiro is level 6, so universe up. Hang on. TC comes in, has Chrono, gets them both. Universe being banged down. Nice arrow from Fluff. Xyle try to delay things, but that's all it's going to be is a delaying of the inevitable. PPD there, and that'll be enough to make them not want to dive it out, ignite out. But right now, Snaw is playing quite well. They're going blow for blow with EG Zion's at every turn. And we're going to have an eight-minute rune up here in just a moment, but finally that bad rider has responded. He has made, it, he has made his way back down to bottom. God, that was the longest respawn ever. I was like, while this is happening, I was going to comment and say, like, and that's good for Nyx because they also have the bat farming, but he's still yep. dead. That's such a good ability. Disruption on the white beard. Size there with the fire blast. So every Fluff's coming in. Fear secures the kill with a clap. Brax and Fluff have to make their way back up towards mid. Not a fight they want to take at this moment. <clears throat> the uh, rune did spawn bottom. Was a regen picked up by the bats. So Mike going to continue to go back to work. Arteezy though. Huh? Looks like you called it my friend. Rushing the Atos. As he's picked up the vid booster. And he's not very far from finishing the Atos now. But uh, TC sitting at 2-0. 32 CS. Not bad for him. 45 for Brax. 39 for the Brewmaster. And Fear should have his blink up soon. About 300 gold. At that point, I think EG needs to try to fight. I don't think they need to spend a lot of time static farming the lanes anymore. <laughs> Arteezy literally just missed three CS all by himself. But <laughs> no, nonetheless, still has his Atos coming out to him on the career. Actually, Fear is going to jack the bottle first, but then he'll get his Atos. And yeah, the good thing about Atos is obviously the slow, but you're so tanky too. Like, you're very hard to take down. Zai putting some harass on the fluff. Arteezy comes in. Arrow split the wickets. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And tier one bottom Dyer's falls for free. Not really contested fallen. by anyone. There's the Atos done off of that and the brew. Also finishing his blink as well. Up at top, Whitebeard being chased off. They do have three. Mike's up here. Has already used Firefly. There's going to be a macro pyre that goes down as universe. And RTZ managed to steal some of those creeps. Here comes TCN. Thought about Chronosphering. He actually wound up for it. Now he'll spend it. Got PPD. PPD a little too far forward or he would have been able to make the save on RTZ. And yeah, once again, trying to wind up. But ends up dropping. So that's a two for nil exchange favoring Snaw. Now Universe is going to make it three. That's a double kill for Brax. Whitebeard's even going to be able to survive just by the skin of his teeth. Fear's going to come over, try to punish them. Fear is yet to use his uh, split. And look at this. Whitebeard just juked him. Now he's going to have to come back by through the tower. And Fear does manage to get his blink on him in time to secure the return kill. But Snaw losing one for three and a very valuable three. I don't think they're going to have any problem with any of that. And suddenly EG's lead, which was at about 1,500. Not tremendous, but not non-negligible. Was at... Uh, has been erased. They're back to zero. Yeah, that was just, I think, way too aggressive from Arteezy. Like, I, he TP'd up there and tried to chase some uh, chase the Elder Titan with the slow, but yeah, it's a great slow and it has long range, but he was way too far away. And they didn't have anyone else, like, up there ready to stun or do anything. They were all sitting behind Arteezy. So it's just a very awkward engagement. And was still, the, the, and then after that, was still pursuing the issue. And it just... Yeah, just a little bit too aggressive from Arteezy. He will push this tower up top, though, which is good. So they have the map control in their favor after this with two towers down. Um, how's Mike doing on his blink? Actually, almost has it. So not the fastest, but um, that death being on the sidelines for 60-plus seconds kind of hindered his farm a bit. So he will have it at a relatively good time. TC farming right in the face of Zai. And rotating down now with Whitebeard. Whitebeard is level 6. 
And he did get the value point in the natural order this time. We were talking last game about his choice to max nothing but the spirit and the echo stomp. So at least one point in the natural order this early. And Mike still working on a blink dagger. Should have it up in about a minute. Yep. Yeah, I like the build a lot better from Whitebeard. And already he's had a much better game. He's 1-3-6. He's died three under under times, but been a part of Radiant's all seven kills. So his movement's been much better this game. He's going to toss out a random ulti, though. Not going to find anybody. Um, that was just kind of funny because the tower Dyer's wasn't even close to dead yet. But um, yeah, and there's the bat, or there's the blink on bat. So Radiant's they wanted like four man this tower. I think that'd be attack. important. I don't think they want to fight this with any kind of resistance unless they have a lot of members of the team. I don't think that they're going to lose top in time. I say that though, and it's actually taken half HP. So they got to be careful about that. They do, they do not want to trade a tier one for a tier two. Now the glyph already used by EG. And like you said, this tower should be dropping right about now. The top, the tier two, I don't think is going to drop either. But it does appear that they will be able to put a hurting on it. And yeah, they're TPing in relatively slow, but they need to send more than just Whitebeard. Whitebeard will not zone them out on his own. Fear hanging back for the moment. PPD has a haste. And Zai's even rotating up, so they're hoping to bait somebody out. There's the Echo Stomp, doesn't accomplish anything. In the meantime, Nyx has taken over their jungle, understandably. But they're going to end up giving up this tower. Like, they, they have a glyph if they want to use it, but they're going to have to glyph and then come in as, like, two or three or four. Otherwise, they're just going to get destroyed. Yeah, they just really don't want to fight against the Panda ulti, I suppose. Arrow comes out, it is going to oh my god it was so close it actually just fell out of range but that was going to hit universe so they knew he was there they lose the top tower though pushing bottom they're not going to get it though tc is going to have to back off and tc caught with a fire blast another tpn that's rtz does time walk to safety but it not taking the best angle in mid brax has been spotted fear unable to get on top of him blinks on cooldown mike does get the lasso universe the target there's a two-man silence well played by brax Universe dead, and nothing Fear could do. Now he'll split, but this is a late split. And they're going to try to chase someone down. Five seconds. There's that Atos coming into play, and they're going to use the Chrono just to secure their escape. Fluff has an arrow in one second, but not going to fire it, at least not now. And, yeah, that's a total waste from Fear. I have no idea why he thought that was a good idea. Well, it's also a really nice Chrono from Void. It's one of the few defensive Chronos I've seen that I'm like... Oh, that's that's a really good chrono. Like that that worked out really well. Normally, I just hate seeing it all together, for even just saving yourself. But that was totally worth it because the the panda brew split came out. So nice win for Nyx. They probably can defend this now too because splits down. I think splits way more important for EG than a chrono is for Nyx. Well, EG still wants to be aggressive. There's going to be an earth splitter through the trees. Uh, caught Universe, actually. Now we're going to have a disruption right at the edge of the steps. There's an immediate jump away from TC. Brax, in the meantime, gets the killing spree onto Universe. And there's going to be the Moonlight Shadow. Let's see how they want to turn this around. Looking perhaps for an engagement angle. Fluff doesn't have arrow, nor does he have mana for one. Mike doesn't have lasso either. And he's still going to get PPD. Fear, without his ulti, can't fight. And they just literally can't fight right now. Don't have Fear's ulti, don't have... Really a frontline finer fighter outside of fear, unless they just want to run Zai up and hope for the best. But that's going to be 10 to 5 in this, in, in this game 3, a series again in which EG comes in overwhelming favorites. Snaw is actually putting it on them. I mean, it's not the biggest lead in the world. It's right around 1,500. But it is about the biggest lead. It's right on par with the biggest lead we've seen either team have all game. So very effective early game for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think that EG's lineup, unfortunately, is very heavily centered around this panda split. So when he doesn't have it up, I don't think they have the tool that much. Let's see, how is Universe as far up? Oh, it's because he doesn't have his Yules up. Which I say that yep. kind of, like, you know, curious because it, he always seems to have it at least before 15 minutes, but doesn't have it up just yet. It's going to be a 16 slash 17 minute Yules for him. Actually just needs, like, two more creep kills and we'll have it, but yeah, again, without the panda split, they don't have that much to offer. I do like the blink on RTZ. I think this is going to be the initiation that they need without the Bruce split. But um, we'll just have to see how it comes into play against Nyx because they are pretty hard to kill. Like, Batrider is hard to catch uh, without a solid stun. Um, you have the Yules from Death Prophet. That was a really nice Yules into arrow combination, too, by Fluff and Brax. Well, like you were saying about the, the Panda split, they just have no frontline fighters, man. Like, even the, even the Jakira only helps so much. They have to have good, good splits from Fear. 
Fear doesn't necessarily have to be getting kills, but he has to have pandas that are causing trouble, that are locking heroes down. I mean, when you look at their team, they have a disruption, and they have the ice path combination with Yules, uh, hopefully, and they have fire blast. But they don't have, like, some way, like a chrono, for example, or a lasso that has a chance to change the complexion of the fight. They have abilities to react to, uh, to uh, people who are in the fight. But it's really Nyx that has the chance to shape with the heroes they have, those frontline brawlers um, that are, they can absorb damage and give out a lot of damage. And without the Bruce split being on point, and as you said, without the Yules being there from Universe to be a nice catch-out tool, they really are going to have struggle or have struggles fighting it out. And for now, they're just trying to farm and give it time. Universe should have, yeah, Universe just finishes Yules, so they can take a run at anyone they please. Yeah, there's also the Roshan option here for Nyx. They have decent heroes for Roshan, the arrow to stun it, and obviously DP ulti to uh, take it down really fast. So if they wanted to do that, they could push out bottom right now with uh, the Potom, which she's doing. She actually maxed out Starstorm, which I still think is the best way to build her. You see a lot of Potoms maxing arrow, but I still think this gives her the ability to transition a little bit easier with the farming capability. So she's pushing out bottom. Uh, TC's pushing out top. I think they should definitely go for Roshan. I know splits up, but with the lanes pushed out appropriately, I think they can take it before the before EG even capitalizes, and they don't have any vision there at all. EG will go ahead and rotate two down the deal with Fluffs Marana. He'll TP away in the meantime. And we'll see if Mike's going to poke his nose in. Finds himself a regen, and is going to go into the jungle. Arteezy's in the vicinity. Yep, and now there's going to be the Atos. He blinks immediately. Four staffs. Slow is effective, but not that long, so he does manage to make it back to safety. And in the meantime, a tower does end up dropping. I'm going to guess that was top, dropping to TC. Speaking of TC, he's got Mask of Madness and working on something else. In the meantime, Whitebeard, give it a multicast in mid. Sai will be cleaned up behind by IX Mike. Brew split did go off. Now they're going to try to focus on Brax. Arrow shot, misses Arteezy. And they're going to try to follow this. There's a Chrono. Got Mike as well, but I don't think they're going to mind it that much. Ooh, nice PPD. silence from Brax. Yep. PPD coming in from the side. Couldn't get anything off to save the Ogre. And now, really, this is beginning to look really lopsided. They're going to push the Tier 1. Mike doesn't have Lasso. Already used it. TC just going to jump right on Peter. There's a nice path to buy some time. Universe has Macro Pyre, but it doesn't matter. There's too much burst. Fear has been very ineffective on this brew. And I didn't see the, the opening seconds of that fight got there just as it was joining. But however he's deciding to initiate this, they actually do get the void with the ignite damage. So not a bad return kill there. But he has to be more effective and more impactful on the Brewmaster. Otherwise, this is just going to continue to happen to them. I don't think there's too much he can do, though. I think that Nyx is doing a really good job about kind of kiting out the abilities. Zygus take hit by a stomp plus an arrow. It actually hits Universe instead. Yep which I think is a better target because he's not oh, as tanky man. and he's more important and he will fall. They're pursuing yeah. Zai right now. The disruption comes out defend or actually aggressively to be more defensive. Arteezy comes in here is going to be the Reaper site and that's a dead death prophet. And Arteezy turning things around. She's down for 80 seconds. They desperately needed something on which to hang their hat. And looks like it'll have to be that. As the TPM forces the blink out from Artur. 8 to 14 now as the dust settles. 20 minutes in. And yeah, we can see it's still in favor of Nyx, but not nearly to the degree you would think it would be. Still yet, EG has a team and a composition that needs to be doing a lot more work than they're doing at this phase of the game. Death Prophet's down forever, but taking a look at this, it'll be a BKB for her next. Bad Rider already has his up oh, his Ogre Club as well. And it's going to be a BKB build for TC, too. So a lot of magic immunity coming out before long. Oh, they're kind of flanking. Oh, the arrow. If it hits Universe, he might have died right there. I'm surprised Universe didn't Yules right there. I think he should have Yules the bottom. Maybe he could have netted a kill with his team, but uh, just wasn't really paying attention or didn't really think that he could get the kill. So yeah. I, I actually really liked when Arteezy went for the boots to travel onto the Necrophos. He's going for straight Ags, which is... Still just fine, but ever since they ch they had two patches, one patch they introduced the axe, and it was like you get this, you get the bonus time added on, and then you can't, um, you know, you can't buy back from it. And then I think the next patch after that they said without axe you can still get the thirty seconds flat of your respawn. So that right. uh, that kind of made it so you didn't have to rush axe anymore. 
yeah. if you were playing Necro. So I, while the axe I still think is good, just simply because it gives your gives you more damage, uh, miss per missing HP. I think actually a, a middle item beforehand would have been a little bit more perhaps effective this game. Like I, like the boots of travel, for example. I, I really like how it works for Necro because you can gank very effectively if someone's just on the other side of the map because you don't have to get them very low to get that Reaper Scythe um, to kill them. Sentry placed. <laughs> or uh, ward placed actually right next to the sentry. So they'll deward that. There's an arrow. Actually catches fear and the Earth Splitter's coming in and they're going to kill him. That is really well executed for Snaw because he had split. If he'd uh, had any time at all, he would have tried to split. And that was just really well done. Catching him with the arrow, then the Earth Splitter shot right on the money. And the Astral Spirit there to secure the kill. 8 to 15. Yeah. And EG is on the ropes, man. Like that, it just really begins to feel that way. This this gold graph is now trending downwards. And again, with a draft like this, where you don't have a safety belt, you can't just go, let's let's defend high ground and, and farm. Like it's not gonna work that way. There is the scepter done on Arteezy. Arteezy 2-2 two, two, and 0. Not sure he's had the impact he would have liked to have had by now. Zai is a little bit over halfway towards this scepter, so bright spot in that regard. Mike, though is i think he has his bkb it's the recipe nope never mind would have thought he would have had it by now brax does though so brax's bkb complete and the item progression honestly is just looking better on the side of nyx assassins as well bkb is so effective for nyx this game too so and once tc gets his like how are they going to kill people it's it yep. has to be with the reaper scythe when they're not bkb but they can't even lock them down with the yule's ice path or a disruption ice path or anything like that or even a panda split because all of their damage is is magical and if not damage it's just the ability to keep them in place like they have the bkbs just really jump eg's lineup so i like the decision for the bkbs they're going to have three of them up relatively soon whitebeard's going for his yules which i still think is fine i love the item in general and i think it works nicely with the stomp i think his uh his skill progression is 10 times better than it was in game one as well yules on to tc caught near the ancients and Reaper Scythe used a little early. They didn't get the full duration behind that, though. The battle's going to join. Fear gets disrupted by PPD. Good play to buy him time to split. Still silenced and does manage to get it off behind the fight. PPD going to be punished for his crimes, but I don't know that they can follow it up. They're going to try to turn this around. Whitebeard's the only target that's really within range. They've gone one for one, a win for EG thus far. The Void for the Shadow Demon. Storm Aspect did manage to catch Whitebeard behind the fight. And Arteezy's going to be there along with Zai. And another nice silence from Brax. Zai's going to end up dead here. And Arteezy's going to come down amidst three enemies. The silences from Brax have really been game-changing. He's hit multiples in almost every fight at the right time, at the last second, that have really kept things from playing out in EG's favor. There's an arrow on Arteezy, Astral Spirit, and this very nice disruption. Fear's going to come back in. They're going to clean up the Elder Titan universe out in the woods. Brax now has to make a run for it. And nope, Yules. Catches him before the TP completes. Another Yules buying some time. And here comes TC with a Chrono. Brax does end up dropping him in solo. Can he get the crits on Fear or the bashes? Yes. And a beautiful arrow from Fluff. Flying in from the high side. And making that a four for two. And well played out of TC and Fluff, who didn't give up on the fight. Came in after the uh, looked like it was going to be over and managed to make it two very high priority kills. 11 to 20 now, and TC, with his Maelstrom, and soon to be his BKB, moves into the Roche pit. He'll be able to get rid of his Quelling Blade. Look at this. Snaw, no question about it. Up to 7,500 gold and 10,000 experience lead at 25 minutes. EG just got the wind knocked out of him. This Potom is actually playing so freaking well. Like, yeah. Fluff is really playing well. I, I haven't seen so many arrows without setups be so effective when they have the ability to set up the arrow. Like, they have so many ways to set up the arrow, but he doesn't even need it. And when you don't need it, that means you can use those spells for other things, and it's actually making it a lot easier to engage in these fights as a result. Like, when you don't have to use the stomp to set up an arrow, or when you don't have to use the chrono to set up an arrow, um, or, or even the bat rider lasso, you can just get those arrows freely. It makes it so much easier to use those spells on other targets. And he's just, he's playing really well. As you mentioned, um, hope action, Yule's actually onto Whitebeard. Uh, Mike! Grabbing PPD, Whitebeard probably going to end up dead. Nice arrow on the RTC again, though. Brax is there. And there's going to be a beautiful Earth Splitter. One for one. It's RTC for Whitebeard. Size down as well. And Mike finishes off PPD. And now TC working on the, the Panda Spirit. 
And yeah, this is just a loss for EG. They will take the mid tier one, because why not? Um, no, never mind. Universe hanging around way too long. Arrow's on the money. That's four down and a triple kill for Brax. Nick's Assassins is just doing work. And TC gonna solo Roshan while they try to put this exorcism to use down mid. Uh, looks like they might fall back while Brax just pushes the uh, tower a bit. But yeah, this is gonna be a free Aegis. And EG may have just gotten... <laughs> I honestly can't help but say, like, they are desperate now. They do not have a lineup that's going to play well from this far behind. They just don't. Yeah, and I I hate saying stuff in retrospect, but I, I think that the Necro pick was probably a mistake. Like, I, yep. I feel like he can't do anything in fights. You're picking him so that you can, like... It's kind of like a bat rider, except bat rider is just more useful in fights in general. Uh, actually, Fear gets caught out right here with the stomp. They need to do damage before the blink, and they can. He's got no way out of here. He's silenced. No blink, no ulti, and he's dead again. But um, yeah, I, I think that the Necro, when I just watch him and how he can do what he can do in these fights, it's really nothing. He has to use the ulti to initiate. But when they're just running in five v five, I feel like he's just. He can't do anything. He, first of all, he's going to need a BKB no matter what, I think. But you don't really want to get one against up. Oh, TC, speaking of TC, finds Universe with the power to lasso, too. I don't think EG is looking too good this game, and I think this is easily Nick's game. Nick's is yeah. Assassin's game. So. No, I completely agree. I mean, what's the plan for EG? And we can point to a lot of things. Like you said, the draft for the second game in a row, by the way. Game two felt really wonky to me from EG in terms of draft composition. And this one kind of, like, this one made more sense to me, but it was definitely on a timer. And that timer has since come and gone, and once again for the second game in a row, we uh, have to say that not only should EG not be losing, they should be winning at least up until the 25-minute mark or so. And instead, it has just been Nyx all the way. You can see starting at about 14 minutes, make it 12, 13 minutes, they just took control and never looked back. Like, it is truly getting insurmountable at this point. Whitebeard even, just being able to bully around RTZ, catches him with the Echo Stomp. Coming from the side is Fluff, Arrow, barely dodged. RTZ did manage to blink, and now he's going to turn it around on Whitebeard, still a little early on the scythe. Moonlight Shadow keeps him alive, as he's going to be able to fall back and TP away. Doesn't have a TP, actually. <clears throat> so, RTZ should get this, and does. Behind that, we see Universe spotting it out. TC, in the meantime, gets a kill on his eye. Looks like that happened right in the shadow of his own Tier 3. And now they're going to go to work on the Tier 3 itself. Glyph has been used. Brew has his split. Arteezy doesn't have his scythe. Macro Pyre was used. And it's basically PPD and Fear trying to hold the line. There's going to be the last one to PPD, though, and he's going to die in a hurry. Tier 3's down. Racks are about to be down. There's a split coming in from, from Fear. TC with an A just doesn't care. Like the heat is, He's happy to be focused right now. Just look. All that time wasted, he's going to have his Aegis popped and the racks go down anyway. The Earth Panda tosses the rock, but Mike happy to take that as well. And they're just trying to buy time, but this is still a win for Nyx, even if they don't push through and finish off the ranged racks. Just bringing down the melee, more than good enough. Yeah, it just, I don't know, like like you mentioned, the Panda splits just haven't seemed effective. and No. It's, th it's that coupled with the fact that I still don't even think they can fight without the Panda split. But when it's not effective, then... How do you fight at all? Yep. And they have, they have no damage. Yeah, they have no damage. The the cores on Nyx are just better. Like, they're stronger mm -hmm. in the late game. And they've actually got the farm to compete in the late game. TC has a Mjolnir if he wants to, I believe. It's out on the courier coming out. There's a heart recipe for Brax, who, as you mentioned, his silences have been on point, specifically on the Shadow Demon every single time when he's tried to go in for dis defensive disruption. Um, I've seen multiple times this game where he's just been clutched with the silence. So, but... Clearly, I think the MVP here is the bottom. She's been everywhere. 3-0 and 15. Really jump-started the game. Has a blink now on top of everything. Yep. Arrow coming out, just fishing for him and catching most of the time. But, yeah, nicely played for Nyx, Assassin, so far. And, I, yeah, this is definitely their game to lose. Completely agree with you about Fluff. 3-0 and 15. And this is a Murano who basically didn't go to lane at all for the first, what, five minutes? Just literally ran back and forth from here to here and in mid. Jamie shot that arrow when he did. As he had a nice setup in mid off the Echo Stomp. There's going to be a Moonlight Shadow Arteezy. Just caught. Flat out caught. Fear has to run. Nope. Caught by the Yule. Still has 10 seconds on his ulti. And no follow up. Ice Path on the mark. But as is the Echo Stomp, there's going to be a lasso from Mike. He pulls Zai back into the midst of them. And he's down as well. Silenced out. Couldn't do anything. Have seen Brax really put his silences to work this game. 
He has been super on point with it. Ice Path again just delaying the inevitable. Next to last tier two. Chopped down by Nyx Assassins. And there are many, many a Twitch chatter who are weeping for their rares right now. <laughs> many a Twitch chatter. There's going to be an arrow that connected somewhere. Didn't see who it hit. But EG can do nothing. Like, they literally can't fight this. If they come out and try to engage, they're just going to feed everyone. Now, Fluff jumps in, gets off the Starfall. And Fear's going to come in. Maybe this will be the split he's been looking for. TC caught from behind, and they are going to be able to do some damage to him. He does manage a time walk to the low ground. Brax has his heart, has 15 wand charges. And TC... Yep, just going to farm creeps while he can, I guess. So they get the tier three, but EG does manage to keep both sets of racks standing, though, just barely. DD picked up by Brax, and they'll just wait on his ulti to come off cooldown and take another run again, most likely. Yeah, they used the buyback, too, from Arteezy, which they technically didn't even need because he didn't really do anything. It was just there to try to, like, add some, basically, moral support to EG so that they could fight. Yep. Getting that, getting just the only, the void kill, I, yeah, it's nice, but I don't think worth it. I think Arteezy's going to need his item progressions. As you can see... He is going for the BKB that he needs, but he's very, very far away from it. Like, very far. Just has the Ogre Club, nothing else. I have no idea what this... <laughs> the thing is, like, even if we give everyone on the side of EG a free BKB, where's their damage? Like, it just... It, it feels like they, they can outlast Nyx Assassins, and we can see it occasionally uh, whenever the Brew manages to get off a good split. That's probably the best split that he's had all game. And it wasn't even that great. It was fairly mediocre. Oh, Courier but dead. It, has a Hyperstone on it. Wow. Killed. Right there it is. You can see the dead little wing. That was uh, Fierce Assault Crest, actually. That's crippling. Just about. He had 300 gold for the plate mail, so. A big disappointment there. And Roshan should be up. We'll know when he's going to be up soon. But if you're some Nyx Assassins, well, uh, I'll pose it as two parts. It looks like both teams are willing to sit back and farm for a while. If you're EG, what, if any, plan do you have to get back to relevancy? And if you're Nyx, what's, uh, give me a couple of steps of the plan to close this game out. Well, I call me crazy, but I think they do have the damage to, to take out Death Prophet in a long engagement. I think the most important hero by far on Nyx Assassin's lineup is the Void. I think you absolutely have to shut him down and fight. So they need to go all out on the void. They need to like stun him once, hope for a multicast, and Reaper scythe him immediately and burst everything. And hope yeah. it's and hope is enough damage. You really have to hope and pray. Because if you don't kill him and if he gets a Chronosphere off at all, even on one hero, if it's just a solo on Arteezy, or even honestly on the Shadow Demon, just so he can't um, disrupt somebody, I, I think they're just going to win the fight. So I think you absolutely have to use everything on the void. Uh, Brax. Gets the silence on the fear. He needs help. And there's the lasso. They have the damage. This is fear just dead. In the meantime, in the jungle, speaking of Chrono, how about RTZ being killed by TC himself? And that's two down in a hurry. Buyback status, none on fear, none. Uh, actually, they do. Let's see, RTZ doesn't GG. have it. He, Yeah, he bought back. Yeah, GG. So EG takes the upset. This is an unblemished EG squad. And D2L Western play taking on a Nyx Assassin squad that, if we're totally honest, not a lot of expectations behind them. They had been struggling in the times we'd see them play. But any given Sunday, right? That's what they say. Any <laughs> given Sunday. Sneaky Nyx Assassins sneaks one out on EG. And EG now finds themselves in a position where they're locked for the playoffs. But they have a very important match coming up a few days from now that'll determine in one best of three whether they're going straight to Vegas or whether they're going to be sitting at the top as the number one seed in the bubble race. But what a surprise, man. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of Arcanas just changed hands, I do believe. <laughs> yeah, I would I would agree with that statement. And I think that the bottom just played really, really well this game. I, I think without her arrows and just movement around the map, it could have been a, a different game for Sneaking Nick Assassin. I think that their draft was a little bit better, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it like a complete outdraft. I think in game two it was an outdraft. I think in game three it was just they played much better than EG. Like yeah. just played much better as simple as that. Like I said, Fluff and stuff with the Marana, nice rotations from him. TC did what he needed to do to get all the farm and, and utilize his chronos even if they were one man or two man. He understood the importance of 
even just shutting down the Necrolite fights. And then, liked Whitebeard's um, skill build a little bit better. And I think Brax's Silence were really on point. He got ganked early on, which sucks. But he was still he still came back in a lane and I wouldn't say dominated, but still was getting every CS and was dictating the tempo of that lane. So right. very nicely played from everyone on, on Nyx Assassins. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I mean it's this Nyx Assassin squad has got talent on it. I mean, you know, Brax, Mike, Fluff and stuff, T C these are players who've been around the block or two. They've been on the big stage of T I before. Whitebeard, certainly playing on that level and having his best uh, his best elder titan. Uh, game of the day for sure and I'm just really impressed man like this let's be honest we uh, uh, when I say we I mean most everyone came into this expecting EG to take a very easy 2-0 and Nick's assassin said no having none of it and no servers to blame is, uh, yeah. it was all you know nothing to blame there just a flat out great game and great series from Nick's and EG comes up short losing one to two and that is Nick's Assassin's, I want to say, is that their first win? I think it is. I think, is it? I thought they won one before. I could be wrong. No, I... Maybe it, they won anyway. a game, but not a series. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking, too. So D2L Western play, getting deep into the late stages, and not a whole lot of action left, but some very important series left for Nick's and EG. I'm your host there in AC Chambers. Thanks again for being a part of the broadcast, guys, for tuning in and spending some time with us this weekend. EG upset by Nick's Assassins. You should tweet at those dudes. Let them know that uh, you lost rares and that uh, you still think they're awesome. That's because I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine the tears that are being spilled over that right now. Uh, but great game from them. EG, of course, still in a wonderful position overall in D2L standings, but uh, unfortunately unable to completely secure their position in Vegas this week. They're going to have a chance to do that in their last series. Trauf and I are going to have about, what, four or five days off, I think. I want to say we're back on on Thursday or Friday, one of the two. And uh, until then, though, hopefully uh, you'll uh, enjoy the other streams from all of the other tournaments and organizations that are going on. We'll be back, though, to close out again the Western season, regular season play. And shortly after that, we'll have our Western playoffs as well. And that picture is still emerging, still coming together. And uh, for all the details and all the updates about that, make sure you follow twitch.tv slash D2L for when we do come back live after a small hiatus. And make sure you follow the D2L on Twitter and Facebook as well. It's D2LGG. Myself, I'm AC. Trout's the guy on the other side of the line. You can find us on Twitter at A-C-A-Y-E-S-E-E -E -E and at Trout Dota, T-R-A-L-F-D-O-T-A. Well, Trout, we get a few days off finally, man. Any final thoughts on the way out the door? Oh, it was just, it was a really fun game to watch today. I love watching American Dota, like two American teams going at it. Um, you know, being biased and American myself. <laughs> right. Um, it, it was fun to watch, and I, it's fun to watch it upsets, no matter who, what team it is, you know? Yeah. It's always absolutely. it's always cool rooting for the underdog. So my roommate in college always said he always rooted for the underdog in, in football. There were, I, had, oh, I lived yeah. with like three PE majors, so they're always <laughs> rooting for the underdogs. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves it, man.